Are you ready to die? I mean, you know, just from a professional standpoint, a close-up just might not be the best cup of tea for this, so. <laughs> This video was terrible, trash. This is not a representation of Wayne Chuck. All right, so follow me. I'm gonna show you how we do this right. Let's just start with his ready position. I heard somebody mention like, look at his guard. His guard is terrible. I mean, first of all, this is the beginning of the match. So I don't really think, I mean, this isn't his real guard because he's, he has one hand back in the chamber, the other hand in a move what we call Tansai. It's not even, it's not even Mansai. It's not even an asking hand. It's just, it's just Tansai. So, um, really, this is just off the Ip Man movie. Um, so this isn't really his guard. But as we look and see when he starts to fight, his guard changes a little bit. It gets more. Uh practical in a sense so a real wing chong guard is very similar to a muay thai guard uh the only difference between the two is that the muay thai guard is higher and the wing chong guard is lower just under eye level so we're looking just right over um our fingers uh i mean there is the mansao wusao guard but it's more so of a training position instead of an actual guard ready to fight. It's more so like Mansa Wusa, which you see in a lot of Wing Chun practitioners. That's more so for when like you're resetting, you know, or or you're uh, not not just resetting, but but you're a far enough distance away and you're just trying to get your balance back, you know, and you're trying to process the situation. So. In a sense, you're 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 resetting, re you're re-establishing your position and regaining control of your center line. All right, so here he tries to block with a gonzo, but I mean he, he he blocks a low kick with a gonzo. I mean obviously it wasn't the proper way to try to block that low kick, but in the throes of a fight, I can't really say like that first kick. I mean you really don't know where it's gonna go, you know so. <laughs> that's just how he reacted he reacted wrong but you know in, in, in the throes of the fight I mean you just react it's not necessarily like oh I know he's gonna throw a low kick so let me just do the proper technique but it's just I see a leg coming in low I, you know maybe he thought it was gonna be more midsection but it just ended up being low so he just threw the wrong thing it's not his fault technically because First kick, first thing out the gate. Then he comes in with some punches, with a flurry of punches, and then he throws uh, a cross in the punches. Like if you're gonna come in with a flurry of punches, you might as well come in with a flurry of punches in the Wing Chun way, because it, it it serves a purpose. If you come in with a flurry of punches the Wing Chun way. That makes it difficult for the person to be able to recover and regain their their sense of awareness. Um, you know, so he just throwing punches like like in regular boxing. So, I mean, from my vantage point, it just seemed like he took three and a half classes of Wing Chun, like enough to get like kind of a stance and kind of some movement. But other than that. It's not much Wing Chun in this for real. I mean, I wouldn't even call him a Wing Chun practitioner. I would just call him a person who took like three and a half classes because that's all that shows. You know, he's a weak gun, a weak gun, you know, and, and some punches that's not even a Wing, that's not even Wing Chun or even Kung Fu punches for, uh, for that fact comes out he throws punches and then you get punched which the flurry of punches the reason why we do the wing chun punches the way that we do if you're gonna come in and attack is to make it difficult for somebody to respond 
with another punch you know what i'm saying like it's harder to trade punches when your punches are coming in quicker than their punches you can't trade punches because for every one punch that they throw you throwing like three or four you know so it's, it's it's different so it makes them have to step away and reassess the situation and then when they step away that gives you your break your your, your chance to regroup even for yourself like that's the um tactical side of it you know if you're gonna do it in a sport arena but if you're gonna punch the way that you're punching what well, look this is what he should have done he should have done those flurry of punches and then when a person stepped back that's when he should have gone ahead and, and did a bugirk um <clears throat> because that little space i mean that's a drill that we do almost all the time it's like that's one of the first drills that you learn when it comes to to stepping it's like chain punch buger chain punch buger you know because chain punches even if you don't hit your opponent it'll at least make them step back as they try to regroup and then when they step back that gives you the room in order to buger or, or do a push kick a very strong push kick you know i mean he could have even did tiger uh or even a teep you know like he, he could have he should have added a kick after the punches you know like just as a fighter in general when a person stepped back and you got that much room because there was space he should have just added a kick just as a fighter not even as a wing chun practitioner but just a regular fighter you know so but since he didn't add that kick that allowed the person to recover and throw the overhand right and then go ahead and throw a roundhouse or the overhand left and then throw a roundhouse which the roundhouse he he felt it but he kind of blocked it you know but i think he only blocked it because he got hit with the overhand if he didn't get hit with the overhand he probably wouldn't have blocked it <laughs> and then this guy comes with another overhand <clears throat> after a jumping kick which he blocks but then he comes with a, another strong overhand left and so him not really having a great guard that actually put him in a position where he uh where he reacted afraid instead of reacting in a way that you should have where technically he should have just ran in um you know and, and and tried to attack like in those little spaces when you're that close when you're trying to say you attack then like you attack first you know you have the intention to attack so when there's spaces or pauses in the action and you're that close just go ahead and, and, and attack like get there before they're there you're too close a lot of times for people to be able to give you a, an effective kick you know to keep you out of the way at most they can just raise up their knee um <clears throat> you know but that's when you when you attack when you put the pressure on if you did that he actually could have broke the guy broke through the guy center line and probably could have could at least knocked his head back or if you're not going to or if you're gonna deal with overhand punches, how about you just change levels? Bend at your knees and, and hit low and then come up high. Cause once you hit low, you're going to cause them to drop their guard. And then when they come down, then you come back up. I mean, that was cool. He put pressure on him. That was all right. That's, that's allowable. Here he steps back off of the roundhouse. Like he should have rushed in afterwards. Um, The person probably would have did a sidekick but if you rush in quick enough you could just jam a sidekick but this really would have been the perfect time to rush in after um dodging that that roundhouse but i feel like it was a smart move he didn't get hit but i think right now he's playing more scared um because you notice he was already stepping back as the other guy was advancing this is the moment he realized this is not the fight for him you can tell because he's not trying to fight anymore. He's stepping back. And this is when he realizes he should have taken seven and a half classes instead of the three and a half classes. He is definitely out of his league right now. So he got him in the clinch. And then the guy tries to throw an overhand left, which he ended up dodging. But if you notice, the guy's uh his left side was exposed so that was a perfect time to throw a body a body shot but now since he's playing scared he's not thinking about attacking he could have even yeah he's not thinking about attacking all he's thinking about is just trying to 
get away from the situation. He's afraid now. So playing scared, he's always on the back foot. See? Seven and a half clashes is what it does. Now he got some in a clinch. Not a great clinch, but he got him in a clinch. Um, it's two things that William Chan has for anti clinch. Um or it's one thing that Wing Chun has for anti, actually two things that you can do in order to get out of the clinch. But then also, if he, somebody has you in the clinch, if somebody has you in the clinch, you know they're about to throw knees. You know, so knowing that they're about to knee you, this is when you use Lam Sai or, or barring arm. Um, you know, in order to block. And then when you feel that he's a little off balance, then you can push him back or push him off or or drive into him or go for a takedown or something you know like you gotta respond (laughs) that's what Chisa was about responding you know so you feel you feel the opening and then you respond the way that's best to respond so I don't I don't understand why he's not responding maybe that was on class see he would have got that on class five but three and a half I mean I guess I guess you don't get that there like, why is this guy here? He looks like just a regular guy. Like, doesn't look like he's trained at anything. You know, like, he, he has on some regular pants and a tank top. Like, he doesn't even look like he's ready to fight. And here, the guy, he throws a few um, low roundhouses, which, I mean, the first one he got, the second one, he really should have just checked it because now you see it's coming. You know, so he should have started checking it with his leg or rush in um, in a Wing Chun way and where we rush in the way that our feet are pointed um, inward. That allows you to even be able to block a roundhouse without using your hands because your thigh end up blocking it. So you move inward and your thigh blocking most of the impact. That allows you to be inside of your opponent so then you can you know take them down because they're off balance because they're only on one leg but here he should have picked up a rhythm he didn't but he should have picked up the rhythm and should have just started lifting up his leg instead of trying to block it with his hand because blocking it with his hand trying to block it with his hand ultimately made it so that he began to drop his hands and so the guy so then his opponent got him thinking low so then he just hit him high, which is, that's what everybody teach. Like, you throw body shots to set up the head, or you go low in order to set up going high. Like, that's fighting one-on-one, you know what I'm saying? So, just knowing fighting one-on-one, you know, like, okay, he's still going low. Let me keep my hands up high, especially if you're going that low. Like, just lift your leg up and keep your hand up and keep your hands up. So then when he throws the high kick, you can respond better because his response to getting to that high kick was getting knocked out not a good response this guy only had three and a half classes he is not a representative of Wing Chun in no sport arena in no self defense arena in no arena he is a representative of Wing Chun only to himself like not of what the art can truly do you can make it sport applicable it's possible you know you just gotta train especially like if there's any sport that you can make Wing Chun applicable the most it would be in this MMA type stuff because you do allow low kicks you do allow (coughs) elbows and knees and some clinch work and you can get close you know what I'm saying so if anything out of all of the things that would allow the most Wing Chun tools, it would be in a more MMA um, type arena. You know, anything else? I mean, boxing, obviously, no. Kickboxing, no. Um, I mean, kickboxing to a degree. But, and then, I, <clears throat> like, even in some of the tournaments, like, a lot of that is no because all the kids gotta be above the waist. You know what I'm saying? So, I showed you what we would try to do as Wing Chun practitioners. In that um, situation, both sport-wise and self-defense-wise, you know, so, uh, hey, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe. I mean, I really appreciate that. It helps a lot. You know, just, just share this and let people know, like, that's not Wing Chun.
this is. Thank you for watching. <laughs> for the record, there was a crisp <laughs> album. It he was, like stopped. It was so slight. Per no, no, no. Like <laughs> it was the exact point of the impact. <laughs> like the nerves are like, you know, I'm here, but like that's losing a couple teeth. <laughs>